We'll start by bringing up the 250 podium first on the Geico Honda, Christian Craig. And uh, second place finish tonight, Adam Cincerello on the Monster Energy Pro Circuit Kawasaki. And on the Rockstar Energy Husqvarna Factory Racing, Zach Osborne. I'll start with Christian. Congratulations on the podium. Uh, two rough weekends. I know to start the season, probably not happy about that, but a big bounce back ride here. Joey Savacci, Cole Nichols went down that rhythm section. How difficult was that later in the race uh, with the ruts in the rhythm section? Yeah, the track was uh, was beat down, and it, this is kind of like the first round for me. Um, first two rounds were kind of garbage, and and uh, I was you know I didn't even race last week, so. Um, Something to build off of. I, I wasn't the best. I, I wasn't, uh, you know, there's a lot of other best, better riders to me, than me. And, and, you know, Colt and, and Savachi and all of them were uh, ahead. And I, I kind of got lucky with them with them falling. And um, But I'll take it. It's something to build off of. And finally got a race under my belt. Adam, congratulations. Thank sure you. it feels good to be up here. Yes, sir. Uh, you won your heat race in Atlanta, which I'm sure was a yeah, good step in building confidence. And then the second place tonight, how close are you to being at you know, full strength? And maybe what's the missing piece that's holding you back from being at the next step of the podium? Uh, I, I think I'm at full strength now. Uh, you know, I had a good off season. And uh, for me, it's been three years since I've been competitive racing Supercross. So I think for me, it's just about time, getting laps under my belt, getting starts under my belt. And uh, I think the first couple of races, even tonight a little bit, I think the first couple of races, I was kind of riding not to lose instead of riding to win and not riding my capabilities, just kind of in my own head a little bit. But um, I think with time, that'll get better. And uh, I, I wasn't the greatest tonight. I didn't ride to my potential, I don't think. Um, there's a, you know, I got lucky as well with, with Joey crashing and, uh, you know, Colt was on me there as well. But uh, like Christian said, I'll take it and something to build off of, uh, you know, hopefully turn into a couple wins and uh, be right there in the championship at the end. Zach, congratulations on another win. Thank you. Um, I was paying attention pretty closely in the main. You seemed to start out pretty patient, and then right around the five minute mark, five minutes in, Joey made the pass for the lead, and then I, I noticed your intensity kind of rise. Was it did it take a while to get going, or was that was there some like sense of urgency once he got in the lead? Um, well, I saw Fernandez was in the lead from the start, and I knew you know I was third, and I needed to kind of stay in contact with Joey there at the beginning because he was jumping the quad, and I hadn't jumped it all day, and I kind of considered jumping it a couple times in the main, and just never. Uh, Never went for it. I don't really know why. Um, but they were banging on each other pretty hard. And I, I was kind of trying to figure myself out with the whoops, whether I wanted to jump or skim. And the jump thing was working pretty good. And I was kind of staying in contact. And they were still banging on each other. And then as soon as Joey made the pass, I knew he was going to make a run for it. you know. And I knew if he got, got that quad on me a couple times, it would be tough to beat him. So I tried to make the, I made a pretty hard pass on, on Ferenis. And, uh, and got into second and then kind of just rode my race to get back up to him and then uh, he made a big mistake on the on the dragon and I was able to capitalize and and go away all right anybody got any questions uh, remember name and affiliation and Jimmy's got up oh, you start like my gray Brad Gebhardt, Big MX Radio. Uh, it's for questions for Christian. Uh, obviously, like you'd mentioned, the first two are almost throwaway rounds for you. Uh, how do your goals change going from a overall season's uh, goals to a week, almost like a week-to-week -week thing? Yeah, um, after last week and not even getting to qualify, or hitting my head. So, um, you know, sitting down with my, my trainer, DV, and we talked, and it was just like, now let's just go race to race and go for podiums and go for wins. You know, it's, I'm out of the points chase now, and it's unfortunate because I've been working so hard, and um, to have two rounds like that is, is terrible. Um, I have no excuses. You know, I rode, I rode bad and, and made mistakes. So, um, yeah, now it's just take it week by week and, and try to get better. So it's, uh, it's nice to start off with this, though. Uh, Kristen Slack, Motocross Performance Magazine. Uh, Zach, it's, you've been in the 250 class now. It, it's been a while. It's been about 10 years uh, to get you to that top step. What's changed in the past two seasons for you? We've really kind of seen you come into your own as a rider. Uh, what's changed for you these past two seasons to now land on the, on the top step two weeks in a row? 
Mainly confidence. I mean, it's just been a big building process. I was away from Supercross for five years in, in my young career, and um, this is my fifth season back, and that's sort of, you know, the real start of, I feel like, my Supercross career. So um, just the last two years have been a big, big building process for me, and um, to get a win last weekend was, was a big step, and, and even the win at that in the outdoors was um, pretty big for me. So it's just it's just been, uh, I mean, it took me a long time to get where I'm at, and I don't I can't explain why it wasn't as successful as it maybe should have been or whatever in the beginning. But um, I'm just taking it day to day now and um, trying to carry the momentum that I've built in the last few weeks and just do my own thing. Steve Guyberson of Vitalmex. Adam, you had you know a few years ago here uh, the shoulder injury and. Then you had a pretty hard crash in practice. Were you starting to have a little flashback from Toronto? Uh, no, I, I think I was a little bit more fragile back, back then, um, even when I crashed. Now, I've taken a couple crashes so far this season. Um, a couple of just, just weird things happened. I went down at uh, Minneapolis and, and again today in the whoops. I felt really good in the whoops. And Christian and I were both, we were talking about it earlier, we were hitting that right side. And I was trying to stay tucked to the tough blocks as much as I could. And I just kind of slid in. Uh, slid into the main line and, and kind of high sided me. But that's kind of the risk you take when you go in that fast. Um, but as far as my body and strength and all that, it, I feel like it's come a long way. And um, even after that crash, I was kind of talking to the team. I was kind of stoked because, I mean, yeah, you get a little sore, bruise here, bruise there. But I feel uh, really strong, really solid. Um, I think that's kind of how you have to be to be competitive with these guys. And, um, you know, I'm glad I've gotten to that point. Uh, Chase Dallas Racer X. Uh, Christian, any lingering effects from last weekend? No. Um, had a lot of those questions in my head. Um, I was just dizzy at first, and, and the medics saw that, and you know they kind of called it right there to, to pull me. Um, I remember everything. It wasn't like I was I was unconscious. Um, yeah, just a bummer. Like the way I landed, uh, I landed face first and had a good little cut on my nose. And it's funny because I was fine in those whoops all day, and that's kind of like my strong point. And then, you know, just one little mistake and I ended up on my head. So um, bummer for sure. Just the way I've been riding is so good and, and uh, I, I belong up front. So, um, yeah. Michael Antonovich with Transworld Motocross for Christian and Adam. <clears throat> They're in the middle to late stages of the main event. You guys were pretty much on your own. They had, the leaders had a pretty good gap on you guys and you were both just cruising. So when you did finally get into the podium spots, did you change anything at all? Did you change the pace and ratchet it up? Or were you like, well, this has worked to now. Let's just cruise it home. Yeah. Well, first of all, I, I locked up at about lap eight. And I rode, I rode terrible. Um, but yeah, that's just me. Um, the track, I haven't rode a track like that bad in a while. And, and so, um, yeah, once I saw I was in third, um, I knew Colt was coming. He just came off a crash, and I saw him coming, and I pretty much stayed the same speed. You know, nothing changed, and it wasn't the fastest, and it wasn't the slowest, just consistent, and rode my lines. So, um, yeah, just, yeah, rode my laps out. I think for me, I, I tried adapting as, as the race went on. Uh, track was breaking down, and um, it, it wasn't really working for me. I was struggling with my corners today, just kind of being able to turn down, especially uh, that, that last rhythm lane, getting that three out of the corner clean and getting that next three. I, I struggled with that. And uh, when Colt was behind me, he was, he was nailing that and, and pulling right up on me every time. So at a certain point, I just kept doing the same thing. And I was just going to ride that pace. And hopefully, the guys behind me were going to get tired. That was kind of my game plan uh, at a certain point. But uh, you know, glad to. You know, I, Joey made a mistake. Not glad about that, but uh, you know, glad we ended up uh, second with uh, what I thought was a you know kind of a subpar performance. Brad Gebhardt, Big MX Radio. Zach, uh, 12 hours ago, you uh, leaped out onto the uh, this surface out out there and uh, charged that track. And by 12 hours later, you're kind of picking your way through it. Uh, take us through kind of dissecting this track throughout the day because it really changed as to how, how you rode it. Yeah, I mean, we could tell as soon as we went on the track walk that it was going to be, uh, you know, the way it was in, in the night show, just broken down and um, more like a survival race than really ju and jumping the jumps and making sure you clean every lap rather than um, burning burning heaters for 20 minutes. So um, for me, it it was kind of just another 
day, like it's it's gnarly at, at the tracks we ride with the 450 guys every day. It breaks down, and I think that that's really helped me this year with bike setup and confidence when it gets the worst, you know, um, in the main. And I think that that's been one of the biggest benefits to being there. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank Congratulations. You.